you've really got to think about how much can I invest in sustainable solutions? You know, can we afford to do different things? And if you can, you've got to do it. Um, because it's, it's, you know, this is, this is the planet we're talking about and it's a, it's a really important issue. Uh, and, you know, and then once you start down that path, you realise that it's a really a circular, holistic path that uh, generates you know, all sorts of returns in all sorts of ways that you never actually expected. We've always wanted to uh, get ourselves into a bigger warehouse uh, and over the last few years we've been lucky enough to grow the company sufficiently to, to undertake uh, purchasing this place and we took time to prepare the space to make it efficient and to think about all the impacts that um, we'd come across with, with trying to be sustainable. Previously, we'd just been able to talk about sustainability, but now we were empowered to really act and make this operation as sustainable as possible. Staff became excited. Um, the new generation that's coming through expected it of us. Uh, and then as we grew, we found that not only did we have the finances available to do it, but we could also invest in machinery uh, and buildings and infrastructure that could actually uh, not just pay lip service to sustainability. Uh, at TAG, uh, we've uh, invested in uh, solar to try and be uh, uh, neutral with our energy consumption across all our offices uh, in Australia. Uh, we've invested in an ABB uh, system which consists of uh, 300 uh, panels on the roof delivering 100 kilowatts of power. Here we've got our uh, ABB system, uh, one of the best you can buy and uh, we like nothing more than when the uh, sun's shining. We're very proud of um, our uh, system. And part of our solar strategy was um, uh, vehicles, we always wanted to plug in electric vehicles here uh, but we went down this path of thinking we needed a delivery truck, which we do a lot of single pallet or multiple pallet deliveries around uh, Sydney, uh, often to site, often to areas where they have restricted access, uh, often where we need to be very flexible. So we'd already made the decision to buy a uh, delivery truck, an eight ton truck. Um, and then we thought, how about we double the investment and buy an electric eight ton truck? Uh, so we did. We haven't got it delivered yet, but we ordered it uh, about six months ago. It, um, it's going to plug in right here, uh, and uh, it does about 180 kilometres on a round trip, uh, which is all we're going to need for local deliveries. It's made by a company called SEA Electric in Dandenong in Melbourne. Uh, we intend to have uh, charging stations here at uh, Kings Park as well as at Stanmore and Melbourne. Uh, currently a number of the staff are also invested in electric vehicles. They'll be able to pull up here, grab charging, uh, free from the sun. Uh, we've got neighbours as well here that are also um, will have uh, electric vehicles so we're not charging anyone for it so to speak and uh, it's just a community service that we're uh, offering. The granulator, this is not our proudest moment at TAG, but it's a very important part of the waste process because this is for materials that can't be recycled, that is headed for landfill. Um, there is, for example, we have here a huge uh, bin of pallet strapping. So what we're trying to do is reduce the volume of this pallet strapping so that there's maybe one truck movement instead of five truck movements. This is uh, used in a lot of industrial applications for reducing uh, waste into really fine particles. Um, some of that waste, such as plastic, we can uh, send off to other people that can uh, remold that as well. So sometimes we'll get plastic uh, uh, lids, perspex. Uh, if we uh, bag and sort that enough, then uh, we can find uh, proper avenues for that, which we're researching at the moment. So um, that's one of our ongoing um, endeavours is uh, finding people that can use some of the material that we're reducing as well. So uh, for instance, strapping, uh, we can reduce a bin like that into something that's probably uh, a shopping bag full. Um, so when you're packing boxes in the warehouse, 
and you're putting several items into a single carton, there's always a little bit of space that you need to fill, a void, void filling. So you can use bubble wrap, you can use air pockets, you can use crinkled up paper. We don't use any of those. We use our own waste cardboard. Anything from uh, crushed up boxes, uh, unused boxes uh, for packing. Uh, it's a simple process. So uh, it'll take uh, any size cardboard through and uh, cuts it up into a really spongy, manageable uh, size um, cardboard void filling solution. Uh, you'll see wine bottles uh, often come in this. Uh, so if it's good enough for glass, it's good enough for anything we send out. Uh, and remember, we're sending out hundreds of boxes every day uh, to, that might contain one item that's fragile. So um, this is our solution for it. Pallet wrap is an essential product in any type of a logis logistical operation. Uh, it just retains products on pallets and every pallet you see in this warehouse has pallet wrap. It's very voluminous. It's single use only. Um, you know, there's just huge volumes you get all the time in a warehouse. Each big bin, obviously, huge amount of um, truck movements to dispose of it. And the only thing you can do with this at this sort of size is, is landfill again. But if you can compress it down to um, uh, a manageable quantity and you bale it up, it actually adds value in the recycling process. That's our beast. Uh, Bramadan, so uh, we bought a heavy duty model, so we can actually um, uh, reduce other materials such as cardboard, but we don't do that. Uh, we have other uh, better ways for the environment for cardboard. So its main job is uh, reducing plastic. Um, so one of these bales can probably take uh, six of these bins that normally would mean a lot of transport, a lot of fuel out there. Uh, and uh, a lot of time and effort just to uh, transport voluminous uh, plastic. Well, there's already enough plastics in the world, guys. And, uh, you know, we are using a lot of plastic tape on cartons. Uh, and where you're rushing around, you know, doing up a carton, you can't really go past the tape gun. But if you're in a, like a production line situation, you can use this beautiful machine uh, which is a paper tape dispensing machine. You select the length of tape you want and out it pops. Now it's already pre-moistured. You stick it on here. Stick it around. And it, uh, because the glue sticks paper to paper, it's a really firm, really firm, very adhesed tape which has uh, excellent properties probably better than a tape because not a tape you can push this in sometimes and get access to the contents but when the paper is sealed it is very secure and then we put the product in we put some of our void filling in and we push the length we want And we seal that up and we're off to market. We uh, invested in uh, one of the best um, film stretch wrap machines for our transport of all our um, uh, pallets. Um, this Landtech machine from the US uh, does power stretches up to 300% plus on film. So we're able to use uh, stretch film to its maximum capacity. Um, we're using uh, 25 micron film, which is one of the uh, finest you can get. Uh, this means that we can uh, get as maximum amount of material out of one roll as possible. Uh, we use the film for um, transport safety, uh, goods arrive intact uh, and as well as uh, undamaged. Uh, what we discovered, we had this parcel of land here and uh, we thought what better than to plant a little forest here on this little block of land. And there's a concept called the Miyawaki forest, which is planting a very dense forest in a small, in a small parcel of land 
so that the trees grow upwards rather than outwards. And by this, having this density, it creates its own little environment for uh, you know habitat and um, and reoxygenating. Now, uh, so about three months ago, we invited all of the tag team out here to dig holes and replant this little area, and we had. Um, 20, 20 of us out here, had a great day planting, uh, and this is the result. So everything's growing pretty well now. They're all indigenous plants. There's trees, there are different heights. So there's some canopy trees, there's some medium height ones, some shrubs and some grasses. 300 uh, plants in total, and there's about 25 different varieties. Everybody loves it. We also took the opportunity to plant a Mediterranean citrus grove right here. So in this area, we've got a limited number of plants uh, that are growing very well. We've got olives here, olive trees, olive, we've got an orange tree. It's growing very well. We've got mandarin. These here are passion fruit vines. But some of these are growing particularly well. We've got more mandarins. Look at these passion fruit vines. They're just, they're bursting forth. Look at that, yeah. So, you know, we've got food for lunch, snacks, cold drinks. Um, you're welcome to pick any fruit you find here. I think they've all been picked. We've got a generation coming through that we've set everything up for. Uh, and uh, it'll be quite easy from this point on to know that we've empowered uh, those kids with all the tools, uh, hardware and uh, the tag way um, of doing things. We're not in this, uh, we're not competing in these areas. We might compete with products, but this is something that we can all be doing together and, and you know, joining hands and, and just moving along together and, and doing a better job. The final pearl of wisdom is get started. You know, if you haven't got started, please do. But you know, the message I get is everyone's thinking about this already. They've already got plans underway. Um, you know, if you want us to, any advice we can give you, or if you want to give us any advice, it's great, but let's all get on this journey together.